Welcome to the Geotactical Solutions training video covering geotagging for GeoJot Plus. In this video, I'll show you how to geotag your photos using any camera. It doesn't matter if you're using a $100 point and shoot or a multi thousand dollar professional grade digital SLR. With the Photo Mapper or Photo Spot GPS modules and GeoJot Plus mapping software, geotagging has never been easier or more powerful. So let's begin and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here in GeoJot, I've already imported some photos. And you'll notice I've imported a photo of the UTC date time screen of the PhotoMapper GPS module. We'll need that in our geotagging process here. So let's move on to the geotagging tab. So here you'll notice we have seven photos that are loaded, none of which are currently geotagged. So let's get into the wizard. Okay, two options here to begin with. One, we can use a GPS file, like the log file that the PhotoMapper GPS module records for us, uh, a GPX, NMEA, a comma separated value, or a shape file to associate GPS position with our photos. Or we can plug in a GPS device via USB, for instance, like a Garmin handheld, and then we can take the GPX file straight from that. In this case, we're using the log file from the photo mapper. So now we'll browse to the location of our log file. And here's our geo mapper, and this is our log file. Go ahead and open that, and click Next. Now that the GPS data has been imported into the project, we have both a camera date time and a GPS date time. These two different sets of date and time must be synchronized in order to accurately compute the photo locations. And there are three synchronization options here. The first one is where we use a GPS receiver like the photo mapper. You will visually look at the photo and use that information to complete the synchronization. The second option is if you have set the camera clock time to match that of the GPS date and time. And that's a manual process where you go into your camera, into the menus, and you manually set the camera's date and time to match that of the GPS, like you do a time hack. Or the third option is to manually enter the time difference between the camera and the GPS. Now the GPS position match threshold down below here, checking this box will allow you to set a limit to the length of time between a photo and GPS point and we'll enter that time interval in minutes and seconds. If you're traveling quickly like in a vehicle, you'll want a very small interval. And if you're standing still for several minutes, you may use a longer interval. For us, we set the track log on our photo mapper to drop a GPS point every five seconds. So for us, we'll go ahead and set this just to five seconds. Now time matching. We have several options here. To interpolate between points, again, if we're traveling, we may wish GeoJot to interpolate our position between two GPS points. In other words, GeoJot will assume you're traveling at a constant rate in a straight line between two GPS points and place the photo at the appropriate point based on the time of the photo. We can also match to the closest GPS point and GeoJot will associate the photo with the GPS point with the time closest to the time when the photo was taken. We can also match to the closest point before or after the photo. Now when you're using the photo mapper, the photo mapper has a hotkey option that you're able to actually lock your position, your GPS position. So in these two instances here and in matching to the closest point before or after the photo, you may want to walk up to an object and record that time there or that GPS position and then step back and take a photo of it or just the opposite of that. So without having the ability to lock your position on your GPS receiver, this is a way you can do it with GeoJot and still achieve the same results of actually having the position of the object in the photo that you took a photo of. So, But with the photo mapper again, you can simply walk up to that position or up to that object and lock your position and then stand back and take a photo and then unlock it and keep on going. So here we'll go ahead and select next now with our interpolate between points. 
Okay, now we're going to go ahead and locate the photo of our GPS device or our photo mapper. And here, if you see on the left hand side here are all of our photos. And we're going to go ahead and select the first one here. And then you'll see that the GPS date and time and the photos date and time are going to populate in the upper area here. Now, I'd like to go ahead and zoom this in to 25%. It makes it a little bit easier for me to see the actual UTC date and time on the photo mapper. So here we have a photo that has the camera's clock time, which is displayed right here. And we also have a photo that we're displaying what the GPS's UTC date and time was. Now we need to make sure that these match up. So for us, we're using UTC date and time. So let's go ahead and select that on the right hand side here for time zone and time shown in the photo. And then we'll come up here to our GPS date and time and make sure that this time and date matches here. So we're looking at April 26, 2013. That's good. And 2000 is actually 8 p.m. So we need to change this here. Now you can use the up and down arrow keys to change uh, the value once you get into the uh, area there. And I'm just using the up arrow to change our values. Or you can go ahead and delete it and then type it in. Either way will work. So now we have the correct GPS date and time. And you'll see here that the calculated offset is 1 hour and 21 seconds before GPS time. So once we have this information matching up, we're ready to move on to the next step. And the last thing we have to do is just decide whether or not we want to geotag photos that may have already had GPS information. In our case, in this example, we don't have any photos that have GPS information associated with them already, so this doesn't really apply. But you may have an assortment of photos, some that do have GPS information, some that do not. So you have to decide whether or not you want to overwrite that previous GPS information. And now we're ready. We go ahead and we hit Geotag Photos. And GeoJot is going to go ahead and convert those and geotag those. And display the result for you. And here we're showing we have 7 out of 7 photos have now been linked to GPS positions. We'll go ahead and select OK. And you'll see here that our 7 photos are no longer on the non-geotag photo they've all been geotagged. So if we go to our attribute editor, we can see our results. So here we are, I just zoomed to the extent of all of our photos. And we'll see all of our photos here have GPS position and heading. So if we go to this photo here in the attributes, our attribute editor, you see we now have latitude and longitude, the elevation, the photo direction, and a magnetic declination for the area here. And all that information was just brought in to the geotag wizard. If you go back to the map, you'll see that that's our photo there. Now, once we've geotagged our photos, you may recall from one of our previous videos that you can adjust those values. So I can go ahead and I'll hit the allow edit and maybe this one, if we'll look here on this street, this was actually looking a little bit more down the street, so I'll go ahead and change the, uh, the heading on that particular photo. And I can also move a photo here. So if I select this one, let's say this was actually a little bit more on the curb, and I'll just move that there. And then go ahead and deselect the Allow Edit, and everything has been updated. Appreciate your time. That's the geotagging wizard for GeoJob Plus.